up on today's show, Elon Musk asks Tesla employees to dig deep to ensure company profitability. A Volkswagen engineer pleads guilty in a US court in the week of Dieselgate. And Jaguar unveils its iType Formula E race car. These stories and more next on 10. Like all our content, today's show is only possible thanks to the kind donations of viewers like you. Head to www.patreon.com forward slash Transport Evolved to find out how you can make your own donation today to keep us independent and impartial. And if you're already donating, thanks for your continued support. It's Friday, September 9th, 2016. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and we start today's show with news of an email sent out late last week to all Tesla employees by Tesla CEO Elon Musk. In it, Musk asked Tesla staff at all levels to double down on their ongoing hard work by doing everything they could to cut the company's operating costs while simultaneously making, selling, and delivering as many cars as possible. The goal? To ensure that Tesla turns a profit in Q3, something that Tesla said it would do by the end of Q3 at the start of this year. But with increased costs, not to mention the impending acquisition of SolarCity and lower than expected delivery figures, Tesla risks proving Wall Street bears right, unless it can do something pretty special in the next month. It remains to be seen if Tesla will do that, but Elon Musk really wants to stick those metaphorical two fingers up at everyone who's ever doubted the California firm. And while Tesla has its own challenges ahead of itself, it's proven itself to be quite the successful car company since it announced the Roadster more than a decade ago. And that's something that Karma Automotive is keen to replicate with the official launch of the reborn Karma Rivero range extended electric car. A rebranding of the Fisker Karma, the oh so expensive range extended electric vehicle that abruptly ended production several years ago when Fisker Automotive declared bankruptcy. The Karma Rivero is pretty much the same car as it was back then, save for an improved lithium ion battery pack to give it 30 miles of electric range and a new infotainment system that's more in keeping with today's luxury cars. So far, so good, except as Karma Automotive announced this week, the price of this new a uh, rebranded plug-in will be 130,000 US dollars, which is a lot of money for a car which, when a rival proven automaker will sell you a faster, fully electric, long-range model for less, isn't that great. German brand Mercedes-Benz is, of course, also known for its high-end luxury cars, but this week its van division unveiled a new concept autonomous electric commercial vehicle that could help revolutionize the way our parcels are delivered. Designed to mark the launch of a new future initiative and a 200-strong research and development division called ADVANCE, the van in the middle in advance being capital letters, the Sprinter Lights vehicle is based on the autonomous taxi we saw from Mercedes-Benz last year in Tokyo and makes use of an autonomous cargo space and integrated drones to autonomously deliver your packages on time. It might be some time before we see the death of the delivery driver, but if Mercedes-Benz's system can deliver packets without throwing fragile parcels over the back fence, attaching illegible notes to your front door, or claiming you weren't in, I'm up for it. It's taken more than a year, but the first Volkswagen engineer to be implicated in the Dieselgate emissions cheating scandal has appeared in a US federal court to plead guilty to conspiracy to defraud the United States, commit wire fraud, and violate the US Clean Air Act. The engineer in question, James Robert Yang, was named in a grand jury indictment filed in US District Court in Detroit earlier this year, but has only just been named officially, having moved to the US in 2008 to work specifically on Volkswagen diesel compliance in the US market. Yang began work on the EA189 diesel engine in question in 2006 and realized fairly quickly that the engine would not meet US air quality standards. Consequently, he and his co-conspirators worked on the so-called defeat device, and the rest, they say, is history. Don't expect this investigation to end anytime soon, nor Liang's sentencing to be a cut-and-dried affair. As always, we'll keep you posted the developments to this story as we have them. Staying with Dieselgate, however, a new study released this week suggests that it's not just Volkswagen who played the emissions cheating game. It suggests that pretty much every automaker has done it. 
The proof? A study compiled between the Toulouse School of Economics and UC Berkeley, which collates Dutch fuel card service travel card figures to estimate real-world fuel economy and emissions for customers' cars, compared to the official NEDC fuel economy figures. And it found that while there was a 10% discrepancy 12 years ago between official ratings and real-world economy, that disparity has increased to 40% in the last five years, demonstrating that fuel economy ratings and real-world figures are in no way related to one another anymore. The question is what to do next. Change the economy and emissions tests or investigate automakers for cheating? Leave your thoughts as to what's best in the comments below. We're off to the races now, specifically the world of Formula E, where British automaker Jaguar unveiled its entry for the 2016 through 2017 Formula E race season. And while it's announced its intention to race in Formula E more than eight months ago, this is the first time Jaguar has revealed specifics about its car and its team. Driven by Adam Carroll and Mitch Evans, the two Jaguar I-Type race cars will be sponsored by Panasonic for the entire third season. Although we should note here that it can't produce exclusive batteries for Jaguar's i-Type racer, as that's still off limits until season five of the race series. Jaguar says it's already tested the i-Type at Donington Park, home to Formula E's pre-season test circuit, and it was the second fastest car on the track, just two seconds off the current Formula E champion's Renault. Given Jaguar never does anything half-hearted, we're excited to see what's going to happen this season, and I hope you are too. Back to Daimler with this next story and delivery integration, but instead of being an autonomous futuristic van, this one is a little more down to earth, namely the launch of a new delivery service in Germany that allows couriers to leave packages for you in your smart car. Announced midweek, the new service, currently only available in Germany, will allow select couriers to drop off parcels for you in your car while you're at work without ever having to bother you or your colleagues. The concept is fairly new, but as we've seen other automakers suggest similar ideas over the years, including Volkswagen, but I'm not sure how I feel about it. I like the idea of a parcel being put in my car for me, but there's a whole lot of security concerns about it too, especially if my car is parked somewhere without decent security. So for this one, the jury is still out. We all know that when it comes to electric car sales per capita, Norway is a world leader thanks to its government's forward-thinking approach to electric transportation and some massive incentives that make owning an electric car a total no-brainer. Well, it turns out that over the summer, the UK overtook Norway as Europe's biggest market for Tesla electric cars, with more registrations than the Scandinavian nation. Brexit or not, it seems that the UK loves itself some high-powered electric car action. Except I'm going to offer some caution here. You see, the UK does lag behind the rest of Europe when it comes to Tesla deliveries, as it's a right-hand drive market. And Tesla is only just ramping up UK deliveries of right-hand drive Model X, not to mention the refreshed Tesla Model S. So while registrations are up, I'm expecting them to dip a little in the next few months, once all Model X pre-orders have been fulfilled. Still, it's a very cool thing. Well done to my motherland. From my motherland to my mother's motherland now, in the form of Canadian firm Electra Mechanica, which launched its solo single-seat electric car this week by announcing a pre-order queue for interested parties. The solo, two wheels up front and one at the back, reminds me a little of the Corbin Sparrow, which then became the No More Gas, and combines a 61 kilowatt electric motor with a 16.1 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack to give up to 100 miles of all electric range and a top speed of 85 miles per hour. But while it's cute in a single seat EV kind of way, it's not so cheap all told, including the 250 Canadian dollar deposit, you're looking at 20,000 Canadian dollars to own one, which works out to around 15,000 US dollars. And that will turn most, if not all, mainstream buyers off. Still, it doesn't stop me wanting to have a go in one. Electromechanica, call me. I have a thing for quirky, small electric cars. I've owned two before. Moving to something a little more mainstream now, we're off to the Paris Motor Show, or rather we're talking about who won't be at the Paris Motor Show. You see, while German automaker BMW will of course have a booth in Paris, its executive board, who normally do attend such high-profile auto shows, 
won't be, instead choosing to hammer out the company's future electric car strategy. That's because there's a rift in the board right now over which models BMW will make electric, with some board members pushing for all electric versions of the Mini and other key BMW models, while others would rather see BMW focus on more conventional drivetrains. And with no consensus, BMW is acutely aware that it risks losing out to the competition. So it's holding this extra board meeting to try and figure it out. Here's hoping the board of directors uses that extra time in front of not being in Paris to wow us with some new, very nice plug-in models very soon. And finally, we all know that advertising electric cars seems to be something of a problem for automakers. From that spooky EV1 ad of yesteryear through to the Nissan Leaf Polar Bear and of course, the Chevy Volt dance. We've cringed our way through our fair share of ads. But at the end of last month, GM's European arm Opel came out with a short 30-second ad, pitting the yet-to-launch Opel Ampera E against its finest high-performance models, including two race-prepared models in a 30-meter dash just to show how fast the car is off the line. And it's a blast to watch and a big relief to know that the Opel Ampera E which of course is the Chevrolet Bolt EV in disguise, seems to have an EV savvy ad agency behind it. I just can't wait to see how well it sells. And that's what you're going to have to do now because that's your lot for today. Please don't forget to leave your reactions and thoughts to the stories we covered in the comments below, as well as giving us a thumbs up and a share if you liked it. And if you didn't, give us a thumbs down and tell us why, because otherwise we can't improve. As you'll note, we've reintroduced the thought of the day in our video stream after popular demand, and I'm going to try my best to produce at least three a week, maybe five. So if you haven't seen it, add that to your watch list too. Don't forget you can follow us on Twitter at Transport Evolve, read our past and current articles at transportevolve.com, or you can check out our YouTube channel for our latest video updates. And if you liked what you saw today, please do consider keeping us independent and impartial by supporting our Patreon crowdfunding campaign from as little as $1 per month over at patreon.com forward slash transport evolved. We're just tipping the scales at about $1,000 of donations per month, which after expenses becomes my sole salary. So I'm very appreciative of your help. Can't donate? Don't worry. Just spread the word, retweet our posts on Twitter, and make sure you tell our friends about the YouTube channel. As always, I'll be back next week with another roundup of the latest Transport Evolved news. So all that's left for me to say is I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Have a fantastic weekend. And until next time, keep evolving.